The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. In the year 2000, Ben Heckendorn built his first mod. We can rebuild it. Smaller. Better. Portable. Since then, he has continued his work, helping those in need with creative new projects. If you've got an idea you'd like to see built, why not send it to The Ben Heck Show? Hello and welcome back to The Ben Heck Show. Some of my favorite things to do during the summer are fishing and camping, but some of my gadget-obsessed friends fear being more than 20 feet away from an electrical outlet. So I thought, why not get some solar panels and rig up a USB charger so my friends could watch Netflix on their iPads while I go fishing? That way I can keep my phone charged so I can call for help if a bear attacks. But why stop there? I'll build a circuit so the panels can also charge a lead acid battery that could be used to power a variety of higher power devices. And if I'm camping, I want to relax and not have to take the time to cook brats on sticks. So in my lazy man tradition, I'll make a solar powered food rotisserie. Also, be sure to look out for this bobblehead of yours truly. If you spot him during the episode, you could win some cool stuff. Come to element14.com forward slash TBHS to register to win the exclusive bobblehead grand prize and follow Element14 on Twitter to find out more on how you can win Ben Heck Show t-shirts for spotting him within each new episode throughout the season. I got these monocrystalline uh, solar panels online from uh, amazon.com. So I think the first thing I'd like to do is take them outside in the sun, obviously, and uh, see if they work and then see what kind of things I can hook up to them. Okay, so one panel in direct sunlight gives us 19.8 volts, so it's pretty much what it's rated to do. Um, if we hook the panels together, we can either increase the amperage or the total voltage. So we just can think of these like batteries. So this is off one cell. If we hook the positive from one cell to the negative in the next cell, and then hook the positive up to our meter, the cells will be in series and increase our total voltage. Now that we've tested the cells, let's hook some things up to it and see what happens. Let's try a pinball solenoid. I predict it will work. Ah, it doesn't work. Must not be enough amperage. Let's try this. We have high voltage when we do that, but we don't have very much amperage, so let's connect them in parallel. See if we can get enough amperage to fire the coil. The voltage will be lower, but it still might do something. Oh, look at that. So the difference there was, we tried to apply 40 volts through it, we had a lower amperage potential, and therefore it wouldn't fire. Here we have half the voltage, or down to about 20 volts, but we have twice the amperage. We have about 2.5 amps, and that's enough to fire the solenoid. So I guess I was right, sort of. A PC fan, I predict it'll work. Now again, we're using the panels in parallel because if you hook up 40 volts to this, we'll fry it. See how it says DC 12 volts, but I'm sure it'll take 20 and not blow up. Oh, thankfully the sun still works so I can cool myself off with this fan. The power of the sun in the palm of my hand. Unfortunately, this fan will only work for the next six billion years. So I gotta enjoy it while I can. This lantern, I predict, yes. Hmm. Oh, wait a second. Battery says six volts, so we probably don't wanna blow up the bulb. We'll just try something else. So, fail. Now we're going to look into the solar powered battery charger. I've got this charger laying around. It's meant to be hooked up to the wall. But I think if we bypass the AC to DC circuitry and just make it so we can take a DC input, we can hook this directly up to the solar panels and then hook this part up to our battery. Oh. Okay, here's what's inside. We see we have our AC side here, big transformer. And then this is our DC side where it goes to the microcontroller and the battery. So I'm just going to hook this up and find the voltages using the multimeter. It's the fastest way. I'm not actually sure if we should try to use this with a solar panel. It might be better off just building one from scratch. So let's do that. Since I love making portable things, I made portable solar cell unit. Let's open it up. See, you can take your solar panels wherever you go. I'm gonna plug them in here to this charging circuit. Okay, so the DC power from the solar cells comes into this charging circuit. We had a capacitor on it, but it got blown. So I don't think we need the capacitor. There's a fuse and an adjustment, and there's a adjustable voltage regulator here that self-adjusts, and it's going to connect to the lead acid battery right here. Let's see what voltage is on the battery for starters. 12.4, 12.5, 12.6, 12.7, 12.8, 12.9, 12.10, 12.11, 12.12, 12.13, 12.14, 12.15, 12.16, 12.17, 12.18, 12.19, 12.
127, okay. Now let's hook it up to the charger for a few minutes and see if it goes up. Zap! I'm Zap Brannigan. Okay, this potentiometer in the circuit here uh, changes how much current it uses to charge the battery, it's basically the speed at which it charges. I have the um, battery charger hooked up in line with the multimeter here and it uh, is hooked up to show current. So watch as I adjust this, you'll see the current increasing. See that? Okay, so that's like fast charge. All right, so this is, let's go too fast. Okay, let's put it at around 1.3. Okay, we'll leave it there and then we'll let it go for a little while and see how much it charges. See how the amperage drawn keeps going down? The more the battery gets charged, the less current it consumes to charge itself. That's why it continues to drop. So uh, we can take it off the circuit and see how much it's charged up in volts. So we unhook it and we switch the multimeter back to volts. We have to switch the leads as well. Now we can get the new voltage. It should be up. Oh yeah, see, we've gone up. Okay, here I've added an op amp, an operational amplifier. This acts as a battery indicator. And by adjusting the pot, you can select at which level the light will go off. And what this will do for us is we can make it so once the battery reaches a certain amount of charge, the light will come on and then you know that it's ready for use. Social media is huge right now, but when you're constantly modding, watching old episodes of Storage Wars, or playing pinball like I am, it's important to maximize the efficiency of your posting, tweeting, tagging, and poking. Now, you can stay up to speed on the latest and greatest in the engineering world by following Element 14 on today's hottest social media websites. Enjoy highlights of popular community content, be the first to see the Ben Hex Show episodes and trailers, get the inside scoop on specials and giveaways, including some that are exclusive to Facebook and Twitter, and take part in any online event and webinar, no matter where you are in the world. Fans and followers of Element 14 can also view product demos, training videos, and feature announcements on YouTube or answer brain teaser trivia questions. Also, be sure to search for element14.com on LinkedIn and Google Plus to widen your social media experience. And let's not forget the community at element14.com itself, the ultimate tool for engineers. Connect with experts and peers, share blogs and ideas, access exclusive video, test new products, and much, much more. When you're looking to be inspired by the latest ideas and innovations, start by visiting element14.com today. And now, back to the show. One of the camping projects I'm trying to make is a solar-powered rotisserie. Now, rotisserie is where you stick on your food and it uh, rotates around the fire. So you don't even have to flip it. That way you can go off and fish or drink a beer or something. So, not too complicated. We just use the solar cells to power a motor, but we want to control the speed. Therefore, I've made this circuit. The core of it is a 555 timer, which is a very versatile integrated circuit that is used in all sorts of stuff. And what this is doing is it's controlling the motor using pulse width modulation. If you just apply 12 volts and ground to the motor, it will certainly rotate, but it'll rotate at full speed. And this motor has a gearbox on it too, which gives it more torque, but it's still gonna rotate a lot faster than we want it to. So what we're gonna do is send it pulses. So instead of having you know, the voltage going right to it, there'll be a pulse of voltage, then it'll go low, then another pulse of voltage, then it'll go low. The length of the pulses and the time between them dictates how fast the motor will rotate. You can think of it as switching it on and off very, very rapidly. Then here we have uh, IRL 530 MOSFET. We have a bunch of these laying around because I use them on pinball machines. And this is basically acts as a high powered switch. The uh, 555 itself, we probably shouldn't put the motor current through it, but the 555 turns the MOSFET on and off and the MOSFET allows the voltage going into the motor to sink to ground and therefore be triggered. So MOSFET, which is a metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor, it's basically a big powerful transistor. I mean, one of these can do up to 16 or 20 amps, I believe. So let's run this thing. Okay, that's full speed. And we'll turn the potentiometer to reduce the number of pulses going to it. And we can slow it down all the way to none. But we probably want a slow speed like this. So what I should do is to add some resistance in line to the potentiometer. So the potentiometer's range goes from very slow to sort of slow. As it stands now, there's a lot of range of the potentiometer that you'd never use in a rotisserie. I mean, why would you do this, for instance? Using this Agilent scope, we can show you very obviously how the pulse of modulation works. The motor is rotating very slowly, and here you can see short pulses. So you're at zero volts, and then you go up to 12, and then you go back to zero. Now, by changing the potentiometer, we can increase the pulse width. 
See, we're modulating the width of the pulse. And now, as you can see, it's on just as much as it's off, and therefore the motor's spinning faster. And if we increase it even further, now it's almost completely on and not off very much, so it's almost the same as applying full voltage. See, now it's basically just got full voltage applied to it. And then we can reduce it, so you can see the pulse is changing. So this is a visual example of pulse with modulation, and you know, this is the kind of thing that oscilloscopes are great for, you know, actually basically letting you see events at a uh, small level that you could never see on a regular multimeter. Uh, on the scope, you know, you can hit auto scale and it'll basically zoom in and show you what's happening over and over. Although scopes are usually best for repeating events, you know, like such as this. Uh, if you're actually trying to sniff the logic on a data line, then you'd use something called a logic analyzer, which we may use in a future episode. All right, so we showed how we're going to have a solar-powered motor with a speed controller. We have that built, so now we're going to make the mechanical registry itself. Now, spoiler warning, I don't know how to weld, or I don't even have a welder either. So Allison came up with an idea for a mechanical way to do this with the tools we have. So we'll have discs like this on either end. There'll be a support rod in the middle. And then we'll have our skewers like this and they will bolt into the ends here. That way we don't actually need to weld anything. And then we'll put our drive motor here. And then the cooking area, or the grill, will be right there. And then there'll be something to hold this up. So all the dogs and whatnot will rotate around this. And this just is a center rod. Yeah, that should work, in theory. Hopefully it doesn't catch fire. The final thing we're going to make with our solar panels is a cell phone or iPad charger. In this brave new year 2012, what is camping without your iPhone or other internet connected device? This part's pretty simple. We have a plug here which goes into the solar panels as you've seen with the other things we've made. And here we have a switching power regulator package. Now this is different than what you might be familiar with, a linear regulator. A linear regulator basically just takes a higher voltage and drops it down to an output voltage, in this case, five volts. This one does that too, but it actually has a switching circuit. It still has an easy to use package with just three pins, but all the circuitry is built into it. What it does is it switches the um, voltage at a very high frequency to take the higher voltage and knock it down to a lower voltage. And what this does is give you a much more efficient um, method of power regulation. And here we see we have a bunch of uh, resistors. As we did on the wall wart episode, you have to set up a certain voltage divider on the data pins on USB in order to trigger some devices such as iPhones and iPads to charge with it. But this should be set for full charge of one amp possible power. So you should be able to charge two devices at full power on this at the same time. Oh man, I really want to charge my iPhone and watch Netflix on the iPad out in the wilderness. Good thing I've got this charging circuit and solar panel. Yeah, now for the iPad. Well, there you have it. We've shown you how to make your own portable solar panel unit, how to charge up a lead acid battery, how to make a little device that'll charge your cell phones or iPads, like this, and even how to make your own solar powered rotisserie for cooking things on the fire. Now it's time to go camping. That's all the time we have for today. You know I'm passionate about using electronics for accessibility, like building single-handed controllers. In our next episode, I'll take it to a whole new level. We'll see you then. Come to element14.com forward slash TBHS to register to win the exclusive Bobblehead Grand Prize. And follow at element14 on Twitter to find out more details on how you can win Ben Hex Show t-shirts for spotting the Bobblehead within each new episode throughout the season. 